Okay, Chef B, I just invited you to speak. Great, now let me invite you to video. And I gotta turn my own video on. Okay, and you just hear Wait Bot right now, but I, I wanna do one more share and then I'll turn him off. I'm just, I've joined back. Can you hear me okay? I can. I'm going to turn I just joined on, on my like cell phone it. because the computer didn't do anything. Oh, that's weird. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you just fine. Okay, let me turn off wait five. All right. So let me, we are going to get started here on Alignment Vision Action with my incredible guest. Um, you guys are gonna be so excited to hear from her. I'm just, I am pumped for this conversation. So I'm just shutting some stuff down here, y'all, so we can make sure that we have a great show. Um, and for those of you who are new to Fireside and even my, my app on my computer, I'm gonna have to update because it's now different on the phone than it is on the computer. So for those of you who will be tuning in later, um, I know some of you will join here shortly. It is simulcasting also to YouTube. So welcome to Alignment Vision Action. I really appreciate your being here. My name is Laurel Rutledge and I'm the host. And for those of you who are new to the platform, I'm gonna introduce our guest here shortly. I wanna let you know what's going on. So on your uh, platform, you should be able to see um, the screen that shows a react button at the bottom. And that react button at the bottom should enable you to pick an emoji and send us a clap, send us hearts, send us whatever makes you feel good. And then there's also probably a button there that says message. So you can type a text in and ask your question if you have one. If you're in the old app, it may still say Q&A and things like that. And you may have to do the emoji to, to get it in. But they're updating all the apps now. Uh, so you may have something that looks a little bit different on your screen. But also know that if you want to get on stage with us, uh, either on video, you don't have to be on video, or you can just be on audio, then you can tap on the little circle at the bottom and say, ask to speak. And then I will see that pop up and you'll be able to join us in the conversation. So once again, I'm Laurel Rutledge. This is Alignment Vision Action on Fireside. And this week I have the amazing Chef B with me. And I, y'all just don't know how excited I am to have this conversation. So Chef B, thank you for being here. Yay, I'm happy to be here. And this is this is a, exciting on all levels because this is a new platform for me. I never knew about Fireside. So thank yeah. you for sharing this this awesome platform with me. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I just got a, an email from you today too because I'm on your mailing list and I want you to talk about what you sent in your email today about the new stuff you're doing and the retreat. So we'll, we'll talk about that so people have it. But I want to give y'all just a little taste of who Chef B is um, and you're going to get the full bio in her in the in the YouTube when we do the replay. So you'll have all of that. And there is a bio in the notes of this show. Um, so you have that too. So she is an author of Let Plants Nourish You, 36 Simple Plant-Based Recipes Infused with Certified Pure Essential Oils, um, and your Lifestyle Medicine Health Coach and Raw and Plant-Based Chef Educator. Um, she is, her goal is to show you how easy it is to transition to a plant-based diet and how to incorporate other holistic practices to achieve balance. In addition to working with plant-based foods and health coaching, she co-founded the lifestyle brand Eat, Move, Be Well with Jamila Norman, and she's the founder of Patchwork City Farm, or Jamila Norman, who is the founder of Patchwork City Farms. And this is a, an initiative that is focused on incorporating more fresh and living foods. And we all know, you know, I love going to a farmer's market. So, so finding those places, especially in cities where you can get really good out of the earth grown stuff is, is really fantastic. So with that, and there's so much more to her, but I want you, you to know that we're talking to somebody who knows what they're doing. <laughs> with that, we are going to dive right in. So Chef B, the reason I wanted to have you on here, and we um, we met at uh, ROI, so at Rachel Rogers' event. And hey, Stefan, we met at Rachel Rogers' event in Puerto Rico, and I had been following you already. I was like, oh, 
so fangirl. I can't believe I just met Chef B. This is so awesome. <laughs> I was like, I'm really not a stalker, right? <laughs> but what what I love about what you're doing and what what I think is masterful about thinking about plant based because I went plant based a while ago. Well, pseudo plant based. So I do lots of plants. But I will add, you know, fish. Sometimes I'll add turkey. I stopped eating chicken a long time ago. Very rarely do beef just because it makes me feel heavy. Um, but I feel better when I'm eating plants. But what I loved about you and the way you talked about plant-based eating for health, right, and for balance is it's not telling people, you got to go plant-based tomorrow and just just stop it. Just, just don't eat anything but plants. It was, look, here's how you start doing this how you build up to being plant-based. So tell me in your journey, what made you decide to move to plant-based? Because you're in Atlanta and they it's a meat in Atlanta. Uh-oh, I lost you. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Let me see. It might be my speakers. My audio is all the way up. Ah, can there you go. I can hear you now. Okay, perfect. All right. So um, the short story, I've been, I'm originally from Guyana, grew up in Brooklyn. I've been in Atlanta for over 30 years. I went to college here and stayed because the weather was great. Yeah. And <laughs> literally, like for me, I've been vegetarian probably for most of my life now because I started when I was in college. That's mm -hmm. 17, 18 years old. And mm -hmm. I'm almost 50, believe it or yeah. not. Right? Yeah. So with that, um, you know, I've just always sort of had this thought around being plant-based. We weren't calling mm -hmm. it plant-based at that time. We were just yeah. vegetarian. Mm -hmm. But I really didn't know what I was doing. I don't think many of us knew what we were doing and that mm -hmm. we were really junk food vegetarians at the time because right. we were eating a lot of French fries. It just didn't have meat. So we right. were still eating bread and fries and starch and those yes. things, but we just eliminated anything that had eyes. Right. And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so let's fast forward. So again, I told you, I've been here for a long time. Yeah. I've been in Atlanta for a while. I've done a lot of my, my schooling here. So mm -hmm. I'm also Dr. Natasha Brule. I went yeah. through Spelman, Clark Atlanta University, graduate school at University of Georgia. And with those credentials is very stressful, mm -hmm. very, um, you eat a lot of stress eating, just yes. gaining weight, all of that. And so when I was ready to have my first child, I had gained quite a bit of weight. Again, a lot of stress eating, not doing all the things properly because I was in a bad relationship. Mm -hmm. And when I was ready to have the baby, I developed preeclampsia. Oh. And so I had to have a uh, emergency C-section. Mm -hmm. Blood pressure was out of control. It was just crazy. And yes. you know, it was just, you realize that lifestyle wise, like all of those things were just sort of out of balance, out of whack. Yes. And because they were out of whack, it really showed up when it was time to have the baby. Right. Mm -hmm. Um Now, so fast forward, because I had to make huge lifestyle changes. Right. Fast forward seven years. I mean, I had done some of the lifestyle things, but new relationship now. I'm 42, mm -hmm. second baby, and they're pushing me in the direction of a cesarean. They're also like, hey, you're older, you're high risk. Yeah. So all of those things, right? And so for me, I'm like, well, they're like, you're going to have a cesarean. Like, that's just what you're going to have. And I knew that I had to really buckle down. And even though I was eating plant-based already, mm -hmm. I had mm -hmm. to really take it seriously to really move the needle in the direction that I wanted, wanted it to go. Mm -hmm. And so with that charge, I was like, no, we're not going to, you're not going to decide that this is what's going to happen to me. I'm going right. to decide what's going to happen to me. And mm -hmm. I had a friend of mine, doctor, she's one of my best friends, Mm -hmm. who had delivered tons of babies. She's a physician mm -hmm. in D.C. And she said to me, she's like, look, they're going to cut you if they have to. Don't let that be the only option, right? Right, right. You can change and you can do these things. So I was like, let this be the testimony. So I mm -hmm. really hunkered down, mm -hmm. did all the things, meditation, mm -hmm. plant-based eating, herbal regimen, 
making sure that my mind was clear, making yes. sure that I had community to support mm -hmm. me during the pregnancy, making sure I was doing yoga, making sure that I was getting my spiritual baths, making sure yes. that I wasn't stressing about anything. And I'm telling you, that pregnancy was amazing. No C-section, mm -hmm. vaginal birth, no blood pressure issues, Oh, and I and I know for sure yeah. it was because of the lifestyle change. I know for sure it was because I was changing up my diet, eating plant based, yeah. eating all the things, being really intentional mm -hmm. throughout that period. And yeah. so for me, I was like, you know what? I can help other people get there. Yes. Now, yes. It does not have to be as dramatic as this was. Like that was my right. fuel, right? Mm -hmm. But it doesn't have to be that way. And as a health coach, I realized that not everybody's in the same place. Right. And, right. you know, we, I really promote bio individuality. And mm -hmm. what that means is one person's food is the other person's poison. What's good for Laurel may not be good for Chef B. What's good for Chef B may be good for Laurel, right? And yes. so we have to really honor people's cultural differences, mm -hmm. their backgrounds, in their food choices right. and not say, oh, everybody needs to be vegan. Everybody needs to be this. No, that's not the case. Right. It's I just that, that we need to be more mindful about what we're eating. We need to be more yes. intentional about what we're eating. And by research, by the research, plant-based eating can help to prevent and reverse many of the chronic diseases that we see in our community. So Absolutely. I'm not saying get rid of the meat all together. Right. Your choice. <laughs> but what I am saying is crowd in plants, yes. crowd in the good stuff, the things that you probably are eating anyway, bring more of it in yes. and you will see the difference. You just will yes. in your life. You just will. I love that. And, you know, and it's so funny because often I think we, it's just like anything. When we get fanatical about it, instead of drawing people into things that may be great for them, we push them away, right? Oh, yeah. I always think about, and this is such a bad, it's probably I'm saying it because I went to Ash Wednesday this morning, but it's kind of like new Christians. New Christians will beat you up with the Bible, right? Because they're so excited to be new Christians. But they right. are quoting scripture at you. They are, it's, it's a nightmare. But those folks who've been in, in the game for a while, it's like, you know what? Here's what it says. Right. Here's the context. Yeah. You do you, but understand, right? What that means. They, they, yeah. There's an allowance for what things really say. And so when you talk about kind of lifestyle and honoring lifestyle and honoring what works, I know for me, and especially I had on, I had on three physicians. Um, Dr. Shayla was one of them and she was at ROI, three physicians last week. And we were talking about health and heart health because last month or this month is heart health month. Um, and there's so many health disparities in the black and brown communities and heart disease is big for us. Mm -hmm. Diabetes is big for us. I left corporate with type two and now it, it runs in my family. I mean, somebody, somebody had some of everything. I never had heart issues or blood pressure issues, but that was one, that was my gift from corporate. Kind of like you said, right? Stress eating, not yeah. exercising. And, and more yeah. for me, it truly was the mental and emotional stress more than anything mm -hmm. manifesting in all of that, right? right? And so when I left and started my journey in entrepreneurship and, and really trying to say, you know what? I've already got other issues. You know, I got body dysmorphia issues. I got all these kind of things, right? My first diet was in fifth grade. I, I got the stuff. I got the, the stuff that a lot of us girls go through. But I, I refuse to go out like this. I refuse. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna have to do something. And I don't like to eat anyway, to be honest. I'm not a big, like, I don't enjoy the act of eating. I like food, but I don't enjoy the act of eating. And I thought, you know what? So I can't do volumes. All these people that are like, well, do this diet and you get all this volume. I can't do that. Plant-based was like gold for me. Yeah, I felt better. My brain acted better. I didn't feel real full. Um and, and it just seemed like it was something that for me, I could still eat the stuff that I grew up with. Kind of like you said, that cultural, right? Honoring the culture. So I could eat my cabbage, right? I could eat my black eyed peas. I love beans, right? I could do all of that and, and not necessarily have to have the meat. And I could throw some fish in there every once in a while because I love fish and that doesn't make me feel as bad. 
But how, when you talk about people really moving and honoring where they are and making a decision about putting more plants on the plate, right? What are some of the things when you work through your clients to help them think about plant-based, not as a, a fad or just a, a thing to say because everybody's doing it right, but truly something they can step into as a mindful, intentional decision? So I, I think, you know, people need to be honest about what feels good, what tastes mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when people really start exploring their culture and the foods that they've been introduced to, people start to realize that maybe their parents weren't the best cooks and mm -hmm. that they were being limited anyway in the way their culture, like their home culture was set up around food. So, mm -hmm. for example, um, there's a woman that I know, she's a client who was diagnosed and was dealing with breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the foods that she's now experiencing on her healing journey, she's like, I never ate these things. Like, we never yeah. ate kale. We never ate green beans raw. We never ate right? all of the things that, like, from a healing standpoint, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. she's being introduced to now. She had never seen those things in her childhood because right. it was very much soul food, South, Southern mm -hmm. food, very much the same things that, you know, yes. so what, they, what they call that? Um, soul Sunday or grandmama's house on so oh, soul yeah, food yeah. Sunday, or what, soul whatever Sunday, they call yeah. it, soul food Sunday. And so yeah. she, she has now been talking a lot about giving yourself permission to, to get help and to, try something new. She is now giving herself that permission to see new things around food and to try new things around food and not coming from a place where, oh, this is going to be nasty, but like, maybe you're going to like it. Maybe it's going to be good for you. Maybe it's going to be healing mm -hmm. to the body. Mm -hmm. And so I do think that culturally, you know, in many cases, we limit ourselves in terms of what we eat and what we mm -hmm. allow ourselves to eat. We're like, oh, if it's not Caribbean, then I'm not, I don't want it. If it's not right. American food, I don't want it. And I'm encouraging people on my platform. I'm like, let's just go to the grocery store and pick something up new. Like I recently posted yes. um, something around parsnips <laughs> and yes. it went crazy. It went crazy. Yes. People at the gym is like, oh my God, I, I want to try that. And they're like, well, yes. where can I find that? I'm like, at Kroger, at Publix. <laughs> <laughs> the farmers were parsnips? Like, are you kidding me? It's right. basic stuff. It's not anything yeah. like rocket science. So you start realizing that people are very limited in what they mm -hmm. eat. They kind of have their go-to few items that they, they eat, but we're not really expanding our, our palate. Right. We're not expanding our repertoire. And that's probably one of the reasons why we're having some of the issues that we're, we're having. If we had a more exploratory perspective around food, plant-based food, right. and looked at it as an opportunity for us to, you know, really just create new experiences mm -hmm. and, and, and create more just sort of senses, like you really just like feeling, smelling, like just yes. it's like a whole new experience, right? Yes. When you go yes. and try these things. To me, that's exciting. I don't know. Some people don't get excited about that. Right. But when I right. start thinking about food and exploring food in that way, mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but that's super exciting to me. Yeah. And it helps to just um, approach it from a different perspective mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. we can now like learn something and create something new. Yes. Yeah. You know, and I want to dig into that a little deeper. And Stefan, you know, anytime you have a question or have a comment, just, just jump on up. Um, on the stage. Um, Stefan's awesome. He's another creator on, on the platform. So definitely follow him. He's got some incredible conversations on his show that happen. Um, so I want to explore something you talked about. It's this whole idea of we, we don't necessarily get exposed to a bunch of different food for a lot of socioeconomic reasons, right? Um, gentrification reasons, all the things. Um, but we are, and, and I believe that a lot of the challenges we have are not about capability, but truly are about exposure, right? We haven't been exposed to anything different. But I see now all of these people that are 
posting everything about travel, right? Travel this, going to all these places, going to exotic places. But then I hear some of these same people and see some of the same things. They're like, oh, I don't know. I can't try that. Why are you eating that? What is that? Right? <laughs> or people who immediately pick up everything and smell it, which always drove me crazy. Don't don't sniff the food. And don't sniff mine. If you're going to sniff somebody's food, don't come in. I have a friend like that. She sniffs oh, food first. Oh, I can't I'm do it. It just, to me, I'm like, you're sticking your nose in the food. That just, it's like a sanitary thing for me. But how do we, how do we get people? Because my, because my, my brother's the same way. He's kind of, we don't necessarily consider ourselves foodies, but we like to try different stuff um, and see what it's like. There are very few things that I won't eat. I won't eat a bug. I'm not going to eat bugs. So I won't try that. I know that. Um, and there's some things I can't eat. Like I can't eat mushrooms, right? Just because they do do funny things to my system and, and things like that. But other than that, I'm pretty open. That's good. Cool. Um, not a big game person, right? I don't eat a lot of game. That's never been my thing. Um, but growing up with a parent who was in the country, right? Every once in a while, a squirrel or something would come across the table. I'm like, yeah, I'm not eating that. <laughs> how do we, how do we, especially when we talk about, right, plant-based, and there's stuff that we've not seen, like like me trying to get my mind around jackfruit, right? How do How do we encourage people, especially in our community, to not immediately shut down and say, oh, I'm not trying that. That doesn't look right. That doesn't smell right. How do we... How do we encourage people to just think differently about food? You know what? Um, it's so interesting. Like, I want to pr- kind of bring the, like, kind of bring it back to the jackfruit. Mm-hmm. What I what I'm seeing online is that people are trying to make things like meat that are plants. Yes, and I think that's not the approach. Mm-hmm. So people are really trying to turn jackfruit into chicken yes or they might be like you know like they'll say oh my gosh like they'll like i saw somebody take a fake drumstick mm-hmm. they, have yes. mushrooms. they made like jerk chicken drumlet drumettes yes so they I shaved the mushrooms yeah and around I, I thought room. it was creative right so it's yes. creative and all of that but i'm like from a broader perspective it's like why are you doing this it's yes. mushrooms it's not mm-hmm. chicken it's not meat yeah. and i think yeah. what we have to do is really unpack what the desire is to make things something else like mm-hmm. why are you doing that Mm-hmm. Why can't you just explore this thing for what it is? So mm-hmm. going back to the jackfruit, jackfruit is an actual fruit, right? Yeah. yeah. When I went to Jamaica, I had just come into the country mm-hmm. and they were selling jackfruit. And I even saw it on a, a menu at a, rest, a Rasta restaurant. Mm-hmm. They had mm-hmm. jackfruit smoothies. And I was like, mm-hmm. I was a little confused because right. I'm thinking, wait a minute, they trying to make jackfruit right. chicken. Right. But jackfruit is a fruit. It's like a fruit. Yes. And in tropical climates, you actually eat it the way it, you're supposed to eat it, mm-hmm. which is as a fruit. Yes. And Laurel, when I tell awesome. you one of the most amazing, when it's ripened and it yeah. does it naturally, it tastes almost like a cross between a mango, a pineapple, Ooh. um, uh, what is it? Mango, pineapple, and it's like one other thing. Maybe like a pear or something. Oh, it wow. is amazing. And I'm and eating this thing. Thing. Like I'm looking at it. It's completely different in color because when we eat it, it's white because it's yes. not been ripened. Yes. But the actual jackfruit, when it's ripened, looks like your shirt. It's that oh, beautiful, wow. vibrant okay. yellow. So think of like pineapple, mango, those yes. colors. Uh-huh. It tastes just like it's amazing. It's wow. amazing. So yeah. for me, I, I think that we need to move away from trying to make foods meat, <laughs> make plants meat, you know? And yeah. it's like this sort of sultry, deep connection that people are like, yeah. oh, I got to eat meat. So I'm going to be vegan, but I'm going to have a burger. I'm going to have. You know, yes. the, the cultured yes. meat. So I'm going to do an impossible mm-hmm. burger because it still tastes like me, even though I'm, yes. I'm vegan. And I'm yes. like, mm-hmm, like, let's ship that. Now, yeah. in all fairness, you know, I have a meal prep business. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And I would say 95% of the foods that we sell there, Mm -hmm. 95%, it is what it is. It's just whole grains, plants, beans, deliciously, right? Mm -hmm. We do use jackfruit (laughs) and I do use that as this sort of texture, but I don't call it just jackfruit. Right. You know what I mean? It's just jackfruit. Right. And I don't use the impossible. I don't do any of those things because I really want people to fall back in love with plants and yeah. what plants can do for us. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the reasons why I'm doing the taste tests on my platform and yeah. showing you how to make very simple, like one thing we're eating in season and we're choosing one thing from that seasonal mm-hmm. list. And we're like, mm-hmm. okay, let's do something with this because yeah. It's like we've forgotten, because people don't cook anymore, we've forgotten what food tastes like because we're not in the kitchen getting our hands dirty. We're not out there really exploring. We're eating the same old thing over and over and yes. over. And, and you know, I know you're up in, in Texas. Yeah. I'm in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Everything is soul food. Everything is soul food. And here's and meat, like, meat, meat, steak. Porterhouse is red, red. The bloodier the better in Texas. I I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's just ongoing education and and there's small small successes, right? Small wins like having someone try jackfruit in Jamaica and try it in its original form and be like, well, what do you think? And like, oh my God, this is amazing. Yeah. Those yes. are the those are the wins and the the opportunities to really give people another experience. It doesn't have to be like this, all the things, but just one exploration yeah. that's positive. You yeah. know, that's what helps to move the needle. It's it's the one, it's the one experience and the next one Perfect. experience. Yeah. Before you know it, this person's eating something that they never even thought that they liked. Because yeah. they were they they had the courage to go out there and, and just try something different. That's really what it's all about. I mm-hmm. love that. And I because even even coconut water, and I remember, and here's the thing too, and maybe you find this as well. I think we also have to appreciate that our palates mature. So mm-hmm. I remember the first time I went to Puerto Rico for work, I was like right out of I was right out of grad school. And so I was doing a lot of work in Puerto Rico and, and I was staying, you know, two and three weeks at a time. And so I'd go do some stuff over the weekends. And I went on this one tour and they had, they did fresh coconuts and coconut water, right? Just put the straw in. And I was like, ah, uh, 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 uh. no, no, no. Because, you know, I grew up with coconut in the bag that sweetened shredded coconut, right? Right. No. So I hadn't had coconut water in since that time. So that was, I'm going to date myself. That was in the nine, late 90s, late 90s, mid to late 90s. And then when I turned 50, I went to Jamaica, took some girlfriends of mine to Jamaica. And I had coconut water since then. But I was like, eh, honey, they gave us that fresh coconut water. I have no, it's <laughs> not the bite of cocoa, y'all. That's not fresh coconut that water. That ain't it. Right. That's that not ain't it. it. Right. And so I think to your point, sometimes one, our palates change over time and they get mature. There are things that we can, I think, tolerate over time or at least are willing to give a chance over time as we mature. Yeah, that's right. And I think because we have so much processed food, we have so many things and, and, and companies jump on the bandwagon. They jump on the health bandwagon. They put all this stuff that's supposed to be healthy. You know, coconut water, almond milk, cashew milk, all the, especially if you're lactose intolerant um, or just don't like milk. But what we don't realize, I think, sometimes is while the name may say what we're looking for, the ingredients are not what we're looking for. Exactly. And so if, when you try that thing in your HEB or your Kroger or your Randall's, that's not necessarily the thing that that's you're right. getting. That's and right. so when you go then away to somewhere else where you can get the real thing, try the real thing because you may not really know what you're missing or what you're getting. If you haven't given yourself the opportunity to try the real, real, that's right. You know, because that right. that coconut water in Jamaica was was different. That was that was a whole different experience, right? 
than than some of these other things. And watch your soy. What they put soy in everything. Watch out for the soy, y'all. Yeah. Um, yes, so so as you as you think about kind of us moving and moving into this more this healthy place, you you said something earlier about you know, we're trying to, we're trying to make things taste like meat, right? We're mm. trying to, we're saying we want to go plant-based and we're saying we want to go vegetarian or vegan, right? All the way vegan, <clears throat> but we're trying to make everything taste like meat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That to me says, you don't really want to be vegetarian or vegan, <laughs> right? You're not well, really no, I don't think it's that, Laura. I think that I think what we have, what you're being remiss about is that we're not really in love with the meat. You're in love mm-hmm. with the memories that the meat gives you. That's a good point. So yeah. it's all about memories, right? And mm-hmm. so even if you think about bacon or things mm-hmm. that are very sort of rich in flavor, yeah, it's really not the bacon. It's the spices. It's the, mm-hmm. the, the food memories that that evokes in that olfactory. Mm-hmm that you are remembering. It's a remembering. Mm-hmm. And you're, you know, like we use food as a way of comfort and yes. as a way of just making us feel good. And yes. so yeah. people are always going back to those places that make mm-hmm. them feel good, particularly during this time, this crazy time yes. in yes. our history. And so people are trying to feel good. People are trying, so it's very deep. This conversation is deep. People yeah. are trying to like just sort of, you know, coddle themselves mm-hmm. and, and just feel normal, you know, yeah. feel feel happy, feel yeah. comforted, feel safe. And so people do a number of things in order to get that feeling. Mm-hmm. People, mm-hmm. you know, are in community that might make them feel right. safe. People might mm-hmm. be by themselves, they're introverted. So they mm-hmm. eat to feel safe. They eat to yeah. feel comfortable, right? And so I think that I think that people at, on a deep emotional level are just trying to go back to places where they remember good feelings, good yeah. times, and there's certain foods that help to evoke that emotion mm-hmm. for them. Mm-hmm. And you know, but what I'm I'm pushing the needle to say is you're really not wanting the meat per se. Mm-hmm. It's the flavors mm-hmm. and the spices yes. and those things that are usually connected to certain kinds of meat that mm-hmm. you want. And so yeah. that's what people are kind of playing around with, with the plant-based. They're putting the jerk spices on the mushrooms. They're putting the smoky yeah. spices on the mushrooms. They're trying to play mm-hmm. with textures so the, that's really, so it's this like deeper yeah. thing that's happening in your body that mm-hmm. you have to reconcile with, like, why are you mm-hmm. choosing that? What's really going on yeah. for you? I don't need that anymore. Like I realized after being away from, from meat for a very long time, that it has an aftertaste that I'm not really crazy about. Like once you start eating cleaner, mm-hmm. there's certain things that you forget but that you know that you used to probably deal with, but you right. don't deal with it anymore because you're eating cleaner. And then when you just kind of do a test, let me see if I like this again. You just try yeah. something. You're mm-hmm. like, ooh, fish actually has this rank smell, this aftertaste. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't really like that. I don't really yeah. want that anymore. Mm-hmm. And so you're right to your point about your palate changing. Like you just yes. your body craves different things, your mm-hmm. palate craves different things. And it's yeah. about you honoring that thing and really like listening to what your body yeah. is telling you that it needs or no longer needs. Mm-hmm. And that's the other piece of this. You know, I always say that eating is like a, a bad boyfriend. Like the, the foods you choose mm-hmm. is like a bad boyfriend. So here's where I'm going with that. Yeah. Sometimes when we're in relationships with our, our significant other, Mm-hmm. You know, they might be doing something to you that you don't like. That's right. not serving you well. Uh-huh. But you still go back anyway. Yeah. Over and over and up, over. Just this time, just this time, and then I'm going to move on. Yeah. And you still go back anyway. And I think if you yeah. parallel that with the choices people make around their food, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're doing that dance too. Like you know, you know how you feel after you eat right. mushrooms. 
But if yeah. you decide to eat mushrooms, it's like, okay, what's going on here? What's yeah. really going on here? Yeah. And so it does take time for people to really step out of this thing that they're doing yeah. and choose something yeah. else. So it's it's a very complex yeah. um, thing, you know, yeah. a very complex dance that we're mm-hmm. playing with ourselves yeah. when it comes to our food choices. And that's one of the reasons why from a chronic disease standpoint, mm-hmm. you know, we have folks who have diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, yeah. because you're like, one more time, I'll just have this right. one more time <laughs> and then I'll stop, right? <laughs> it's And some people, I'll be honest with you, there's some people who they don't care. They're just like, They don't say that out loud. They don't say that out loud. But they're just like, you know what? There's no saving me. I'm going to just enjoy my life and do my thing. Yes. And they've chosen that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, I'm learning through my work Mm -hmm. that, you know, it's it's very deep. And particularly with women, Black women Mm -hmm. who are professionals. You know, I'm a, a professional yes. in the classroom recently mm-hmm. to pursue this work, you know, mm-hmm. in health and wellness, coaching, helping to give people good, clean food. Mm-hmm. What I'm realizing, you you can probably attest to this, yeah. being in corporate America, being in yeah. higher ed, super stressful. Yeah. And there's a lot of stress eating. There's a lot of us mm-hmm. doing things that is not showing up yeah. as self-care because we're climbing the ladder of success, right. right? Right. And so that's when these things start creeping in. So you said you got a gift of diabetes, type two diabetes yes. from corporate America. Mm-hmm. I got the gift of hypertension mm-hmm. from being in graduate school, climbing the yeah. ladder. So we, we just have to have yes. those real conversations with ourselves. And I also believe yeah. that we really need to be in community spaces mm-hmm. where we can really unpack Yes. Some of our challenges Mm -hmm. so that we can, you know, be better and really start wrestling with some of the struggles that we're having. You can't do it by yourself because you'll just continue perpetuating the same old, same old. It's being in safe spaces where we can really unpack and really kind of pull apart Mm -hmm. what's really happening with me and why am I choosing this for myself where the needle begins to start moving a bit. Well, and I think, you know, the, the, I call the show Alignment Vision Action for a reason, right? It is, and, and all of the work I do with clients, it re- everything kind of falls into those those three buckets, right? It is alignment with who you are and where you are, you know, that clarifying that vision of what you want, and then really moving into that action by understanding what it's going to take to get there and what you're willing to do to get there, right? Yes. And so part of underlying everything that you're saying is you got to know you, right? You got to know you. And, and so I know for me, like, I don't eat chicken anymore. Very rarely do I eat chicken. And I remember my mom saying, what, what, what have you got against chicken? <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? I honestly don't have anything against chicken, but I just chicken myself out, to be honest, right? Because especially, yeah. uh, you know, when you're of a certain age and you've been through the, the Weight Watchers and the Jenny Craigs and the this and the that and the, all the things, chicken is like the meat to end all meats. That's the meat mm-hmm. you can do, right? That's the one. And I felt like I was growing feathers. I just couldn't, I can't do any more chicken. Right? Just the thought and the smell of it just makes my stomach turn, right? But it's not about some big, I don't do chicken, right? And I don't want anybody around me to eat chicken. I don't care if you eat chicken. But what I know about me, and because I'm, I am, I've done the work, I've done the hard work and continue to do the hard work. I've had a therapist for 12, 13 years now. I've continued to do the hard work is, that whole idea of, at least for me, and I think you're, you're, you hit it right on the head, we have to know for ourselves what we need. For me, I cannot think about food and diet and weight and all of those kind of things in numbers. I cannot. I cannot count calories. I can't, I can't do those things because I have, it becomes obsessive for me. I'm like, okay, well, it's been two hours and 59 minutes and I got to eat it three hours. If I don't eat it three hours, that's a problem, right? I mean, it, it becomes an obsession. And so I know for me, turning around the idea to say food, not so, not the, the extreme that food is fuel. That's the only reason you do food. Food is just fuel. I'm, I'm not that end either. But food is there for me to be able to nourish so that I can do the other things I want to do in the way I want to show up in this world. And That's in right. order for me to do that, 
right? I have to eat in a way that is cleaner as much as possible, be as disciplined as possible, avoid the things I know don't make me feel good, um, really get off the sugar train because it's easy to get back in a sugar train. Sugar is so addictive. It's easy to get back in a sugar train. But Laurel, you don't want hot flashes, don't eat sugar. <laughs> I mean, you know, you've seen that connection, the sugar, and the next thing you know, you got to have a fan. So, you know, I think those that that idea you said of, and hey, Ash, welcome to the show, that idea you said of, you know what? We really need to unpack our narratives around food, right? Oh, yeah. And and I want to dive into this cultural piece that you said, because I was listening to something on NPR, and there's a, a guy up in Minnesota. I think he's in the Twin Cities. And he opened a restaurant called Sous Chef. Have you heard of him? Sous Chef. No. S-I-O-U-X. Um, and his whole thing is around indigenous food, right? And bringing that back. And everything you talked about was going to the different tribes and getting the different kinds of corn and the different kinds of wheat and the different, it's not a whole lot of meat. They may do some game, but it is very much, how did we eat as indigenous peoples? Mm. And so when you talk about growing up in, you know, Guyana and then you were in Brooklyn and now you're in Atlanta from a cultural perspective, how do you see like an ability to, or, or, or for those of us who really, who do like to explore, how do we, how do we take that, interest in that excitement and that curiosity and delve into those other foods that may not be what we see in our grocery store, but are cultural staples of peoples who have like actually really strong health histories. They may be kind of crazy now, right? Because he was yeah. talking about how he grew up with all the canned stuff and the government cheese and the government beans and the you know all the stuff with the preservatives. But if you go back to the history of the community and the food and how we ate, so much cleaner, so much healthier, not as much disease. How do you kind of guide people into maybe digging into that exploration around the culture of food and, and trying those things that really did build communities? Beyond our, you know, soul food dinner on Sunday, right? Because that's really more about real community than the food itself. Well, I, I think it's just what you're saying. Like, I think if you if you say to yourself that I am a person of the world, I'm a citizen of the world, and my goal is to really as as much as I can, because I'm like, it's a gift to be able to go to these different places and yeah. really see how other people are living. So for me, I start there. It's like, I am a citizen of the world mm -hmm. and it is a privilege for me to be able to go in and step into these different spaces and learn about you and you mm -hmm. and you. And along the way, I'm going to, you know, show you Something that you like, so for me, it's like this, it's like a conversation that I'm having yes. with my Nana, my grandmother, my mother. Mm -hmm. We always got together on Sundays and they cook in and yo, when you cook in, man, I'm making this, I'm making that. And they talk in, they, as we say, mm -hmm. gaffing right. and sharing. And, you know, I'm always looking to see the connections to that when yeah. I travel to see, okay, everybody got a soup. How are, how is their soup different than our soup? Yes. Everybody got everybody got like a tortilla or some kind of like, you know, something right. quick that you got that you got wrapped with vegetables yes. or whatever with flour around it. Mm -hmm. How is that connected to what I've eaten or what my mother used to make? Because the reason why I do that is to show, gosh, we're not that much different. Right. It's not. Right. You know, we're we're really connected intrinsically. Like one of the things I learned, I you know, when you think of pasta, mm -hmm. pasta is usually thought of as a very European mm -hmm. concept, like food. Mm -hmm. Right? The the regatonis, the, the but it's actually yes. very much an Asian cuisine. Yes. Yes. So when you see the folks doing the ramens and they're doing the noodles with their hands, their hand pulling it. It's a yes. skill. It's an artistry. 
that mm-hmm. they learned over many, 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 many years. Like to me, to be able to to be able to peek into a culture and yeah. see that, and then make the the connections, to yeah. me is a is food anthropology for me. Yeah. Right. Yes. And so I personally think that you know if you can start connecting things that way then it just broadens the cultural conversation around food and how you think about it because now you're stepping into culture. You're stepping into a space where it could be something very close to what you're used to. I learned like, um, I I mean, they just call it something different. In Guyana, we make soup. In Jamaica, they make soup too. But when they put coconut milk in their soup, they call it sip. That was fascinating to me. I didn't know that. And I'm of Caribbean descent, right? And it's just, I'm like, oh, mom, we, we do soup too. We, we don't call it sip, but it's the same thing, mom. It's the same thing. And I just love that. So I think that for those of you out there who are traveling, exploring the world, you really explore the world first through the culinary space. The culinary space informs so much of what you see in different cultures Mm -hmm. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And so they're they're not separate. So it's wonderful that you're traveling. It's wonderful that you're going out here and seeing people live and be in different ways, but you cannot separate that from their food. Right. You learn so much about them from the food. You know? So I just, you know... I just hope that helps someone. Yes. <clears throat> There's a quote, and I, I'm going to get it wrong, but the gist of the quote is essentially, if you're going to reject the culture, reject the food, reject the language, why are you going, right? When you travel, well, stay home, right? If you're going to only go to McDonald's when you go to Paris, why'd you go to Paris, right? Just Thank you. Stop. You know, you. I there, there's something that you said, too, that I – you know, that I was resonating with. Um, hi, Arlene. Thank you for joining the show. I um, I remember when we went to Belize and they had Johnny Cakes. And it was this, I mean, hole in the wall. It was maybe six feet wide, <laughs> straight back. And we were, and, and the guy who was doing the tour for us said, hey, let's do, you know, we're going to get you some breakfast. You can go in here and get some Johnny Cakes. And literally... There, there was like, you walked in, there was a little counter and then there was her microwave and kitchen. And, and it was like, it was almost what you would consider one of those hot pocket kind of things, right? But that's mm-hmm. what they called Johnny Cakes. And it was filled with beans or meat or something like that. Yeah. Best thing I ever had in my life, right? And yeah. then we go do our tour and he takes us to another place. It's like a family up in the trees in the hills of Belize. <laughs> right. and, and we had Kalaloo and I've never had Kalaloo. I have been trying to find Kalaloo greens since 2018. It was the best stuff we'd ever had. And they literally just set up pots on this little yeah. veranda and you just walked down and got, you know, got what you wanted. And they had this sauce that was just vinegar and uh, <clears throat> and a pepper, kind of like our Louisiana pepper sauce where they have the Tabasco mm. with the vinegar, but there was a different kind of pepper. That's it. That was the only kind of sauce they had or seasoning they had on there. It was so incredible. And I thought, you know, and, and, and when, when we were at our little island and they were cooking a dinner for us, he did, I asked him to do a, um, a bread pudding. I love bread pudding. I asked him to do a bread pudding. Sure, we can do bread pudding. And I said, it doesn't matter what kind, just, just a bread pudding. He did a plantain bread pudding. Mm. <laughs> you know what? Now, see, and that's what I said. I don't, I don't enjoy, like, the act of eating, but I do like good food. I have it never. Like you're a little food. bit of a foodie, Laurel. You you a little foodie I, I I training, honey. I am. I love the different textures and the different feel. And and the one fruit that you did that I've never bought, the one that's spiny, and you opened it up. You did a, a taste test on that one too. When you opened it up, oh, the rabudan, rabudan. Yes, yes. So my brother will buy that kind of stuff and kind of try it. And you know, I I do have texture issues because I can eat. I can eat guacamole, but don't slice up an avocado. It's got to be mashed up. I can't. I can't chew slices of avocado. I know it's weird. Right. What can I say? It's just it's a texture thing, right? Mash it up. I get, it. Some, I get it. You know, put some salsa in it. I'm good to go. But give me a slice. I feel like I'm eating Crisco. I can't do it. So you know, when I, when I think about these experiences, right, and what it means, and how it connects us to people, and how it connects us to our own health, right, and the work that you're doing. Yeah. 
what is and, and, and I want people to, to get this too because you said you said something earlier about find one thing. Here's the thing that's seasonal, right? Find the one thing. Go try this. Go do one thing with this. Don't go tomorrow and buy 14 plant-based cookbooks and go buy all the things and try stop, right? That's a, a, a way to set yourself up for failure. If somebody wants to is listen to this show and says, you know what, I probably need to add more plants to my diet. I'm going to start there. I just need to eat more plants. Yeah. In this season where we are right now in the spring, and I got to start my garden here next weekend. Um, what is one thing, maybe one vegetable and one fruit that you would say, go try this, go try this right now. One vegetable and one fruit. Mm hmm that someone may not have tried before. Right, maybe not have tried before. And even if they had and didn't like it, to try it again. Mm, I would say mangoes. Okay, I oh, well, love A mango. And one, and one of the reasons why I say mango, because mangoes are really beautiful and they have different kinds of textures. Yeah. Depending on where they're from. Mm -hmm. So like in the Caribbean, they're, they're kind of like stringy. But when yes. you- Go to like Cuba and Africa. They're mm -hmm. more like robust. They're bigger, mm -hmm. they're juicier, mm -hmm. and it's almost like a cleaner meat. Like it's just, it's not as stringy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for me, what I would say to someone is, I want you to try that mango and I want you to close your eyes, slow down, and I want you to try that mango. I want you to yeah. smell it. I want you to take the the pieces of whatever it is that you bite into and I want you to circulate it through your tongue and let it bounce off of the inner parts of your cheek and I want you to just slow down and enjoy that bite of that mango because yeah. the other piece of this is people are not eating slowly intentionally no mindfully they're not for them to really enjoy their food Mm -hmm. You're going to have mm -hmm. a whole different experience if you slow down and a full sensory experience. Yes. If you slow down and really yes. do some of the things we're talking about. So that is one. That's um, yeah. a mango. A mango is yeah. epic. Yeah. Ash um, said, good call on the mango. <laughs> it's epic. Um, I would also say from a vegetable standpoint, arugula. Arugula. Ah, very peppery. Very peppery. And, yeah. you know, I, I think that greens can be considered boring. Yeah. Um, but I think there's something special about arugula. Mm -hmm. I love that mm -hmm. pepperiness. I love it's delicate, but it's tough mm -hmm. at the same time. Yeah. It goes well, pairs well with pasta dishes. It pairs well by itself with maybe a slice of mango or some yes. fresh fruit with a drizzle of balsamic vinegar. Mm -hmm. It's a very versatile green. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I, and I, again, slow it down, yeah. chew on it, take the fragrance of the arugula in through the nose, in through the senses, mm -hmm. and just see, you know, just have a whole yeah. different experience with it. You know, yes. so those are two things that I absolutely Ooh. love. Those are two of my favorite things. Yeah. And you're right with arugula. Arugula is good. I, I, when you said it, I was like, oh, with a little bit of like <laughs> goat cheese, you know, cranberries or apples, like a granny snip mm, apple. It, there's mm. something about arugula when you mix a sweet and a, and, a, and a tangy, like the vinaigrette with the fruit. With arugula, there's something about that mixture that's just really great uh -huh. for the palate. I don't know what it is, but it's just Ooh. awesome. I have to laugh when you say arugula because my mom, now my mom is, she'll be 82 this year and we give her a, ch a, a, a hard time all the time because she's like, if I want a salad, like she, her big thing, she now eats romaine and that's huge because it was just iceberg. And I'm like, mom, <laughs> there's, there's no, but it's the crunch for her, right? So when you give her a salad, that's all the stuff that she says. It looks like I went outside and picked it out of my yard. It's just grass. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have the, the crunch and the stuff, right? So it's that it's also, I think, it seems to be sometimes generational, right? Like what yeah. we're used to and what's new and what we're and, and what our 
what what we have from a texture perspective, right? Like like even bread pudding. I am funny about my bread pudding because I grew up with my grandmother's bread pudding. So I can't have a bready bread pudding. I don't want that. I don't want a cinnamon roll. If I want a cinnamon roll, I get a cinnamon roll. I need my bread pudding to be closer to the pudding side than the bread side. It needs yeah. to be cold, but pudding eat, right? Yes. And, so, and my mom won't eat it because she doesn't do wet bread. So she doesn't eat anybody's French toast except hers, and pancakes except hers, you know, none of that, because wet bread is gross. So I, I think I'm, I'm going to go get some mangoes today because it's Ash mm-hmm. Wednesday and I am on my discipline. I'm going to go get some mangoes today. And there you go. How do you feel about, and maybe suggestions if people are looking for a really great, like either farmer's market or some kind of market where they can try different things? Because you don't always get, they're getting better. But at the Kroger's, the Randall's, the the Publix, you don't always get really wide varieties because they're serving the big public. Where do you suggest people go if they're really trying to think through, I want to challenge myself, I want to see something and try something I haven't tried before. Where are some places that you found that? So I would say um, you can always certainly go to an international farmer's market. And mm-hmm. most cities, most major cities have yeah. one. Mm-hmm. In Atlanta, we have something called the DeKalb Farmer's Market. So mm-hmm. we, actually, we actually have two big ones. Oh, wow. And so I'm there every week because that's where I shop mm-hmm. for clients, for my meal prep right. business. And it's just, you know, just like explore. I'm like, oh, I haven't seen this before. So, Mm -hmm. and then I'm like pulling things up on my phone. Like, where does this come from? The labeling tells you where the item comes from. So it might say Chile or Haiti. Mm -hmm. And then there's flags all along the ceilings of the wall. Huge. So it's like a it's like a destination. It really is. (laughs) And I would say outside of that. That structure, Mm -hmm. most Mm -hmm. cities are now really doing farmer's markets. Yes. And farmer's market season is about to get started. That's in March. And so usually it starts around March. Mm -hmm. You have some winter markets, but March all the way to December. Yeah. And so that's a great way for you to try new things that are being grown within your particular part of the world. Um, You know, and, and try just new foods from artisans in your community. Yes. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know about you, Laurel, but I remember when I first moved to Atlanta, mm-hmm. I would go to the health food store. And when I first got wind of these farmer's markets, I just felt good yes. meandering on a Saturday yes. morning with, you know, my friends. And then mm-hmm. when I had my first child, taking him on a Saturday morning and, you know, a market is only a few hours and you're like, well, what are we going to get today? And what can we, it just was this great feeling that I was doing something for myself Mm -hmm. and something for my baby, you know? And I don't know. I just, being in those kinds of spaces makes me feel good. It makes me feel like I'm just taking care of our, we're taking care of ourselves Yes. And so I just try, I chase that feeling. And, mm-hmm. you know, that's why I really stay connected to markets. Yeah. Because I know I'm going to find something new and different yeah. there. You know, yeah. I, I just, I love that new yes. discovery aspect mm-hmm. of being at market. Right. Well, and I think you t- touched on something that you said very early on in the conversation. And, and everyone, welcome to the show. We're, we're going to be ending here shortly. Um, but please go back and watch the replay and listen to, to Chef B. Um, and she's in Atlanta, and I'm going to have her tell you about her her things, her adventure that's coming up here shortly. Um, but I think to connect, just to, to to connect back to what you said earlier about kind of the feeling, right? Knowing when we start thinking about plant based, it's not not just some fad, not you know, not the pressure, all the junk around it. It's really about how do you get really good stuff and really good nutrients into your body? How do you pay attention? to how you feel when you eat and the things you eat, right? And giving things a chance. And you talked about this, the feeling in farmer's markets. And I, I feel the same way when you go and you walk and, and the lettuce I've gotten from a farmer's market lasts a lot longer, tastes a lot better, right? Yeah. The the things that I've had there, the, the sauces that people have made there, it's just, it's incredible to do that. And you are helping small farmers, right? We, we have a, yeah. um, I think it's called, Plant it forward. I don't think it's just in Texas. I think it may be um, regional, 
uh, but it's called Plant It Forward. And they actually work with farmers in cities and they bring their stuff to farmers markets. And so it's all about helping these, these regional farmers. And so if you can find a really great farmers market, if you can find, you know, these artisans that are making the cheeses, right. And they're, mm -hmm. they're growing the vegetables and they've got the different peppers and it's just, it's, it's a good feeling to do it, but you also know you're getting really good stuff. And, mm -hmm. and as much as I hate bugs and hate the, I don't dig in the dirt because I don't do bugs, but I did start planting during the pandemic. Um, I did a raised garden because see, then I don't have to be on my knees. So I did, <laughs> I did the big, you know, child, look to my, to my own self be true. I know me, but that whole, that process of planting and then seeing it and, yes. and making my own pepper sauce and my own Tabasco peppers, right. That I grew and my, uh, cucumbers that I grew and my tomatoes that I grew and it is there's there's a, a connection of that the reaping what you sowed right for lack of a better word that reaping yeah. what you sowed and so I love that you all the work that you're doing is connecting people to themselves mm. through this journey to plant-based right and being more plant-based and giving food a chance Right, giving food and better chance. health, right? Better health, yes. um, connecting communities. You yes. know, like this, there's no doubt that when you're harvesting foods that you've planted, mm -hmm. it's it is like one of the most exhilarating feelings, and yes. it's connected to the hard work that you put in mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. being able to reap the benefits of all these things that you are are sowing seeds for. Yes. You yes. know, so that translates in so many parts of our lives, not just in our work life, but mm -hmm. also in our food life too. Right. So right. it's a pride that you that you have when you know that you planted that seed mm -hmm. and it becomes something else. You're like, yes. it's like a baby. You're like, oh my God, I it did it. And it's like, we have to get back there. We've forgotten mm -hmm. how magical and powerful we are. Mm -hmm. And that we are able to do magnificent things like that. Yes. You know? And so I think people are definitely coming into their magic and majesty. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they're trying to find that again. They're trying to yes. find those moments where they can create from scratch something mm -hmm. that will become something else. You know? Yes. So I, I think it. I think that people are discovering and they're remembering. And, mm -hmm. you know, I always said this, you know, um, in our families, in our families, our ancestors speak through <coughs> us mm -hmm. and then the next generation and the next generation. Mm -hmm. And in their speaking, there's someone who's going to answer the call. They they hear. They're like, oh, my right. God, I'm. And they hear by doing this thing that is completely different than what the family expects them to do. You right. know, I have, um, I, I know for a fact, I, I'll speak about myself. Mm -hmm. I have healers in our lineage, right? Mm -hmm. They weren't necessarily doctors, but, right. but my grandmother, people would call her to read her their dreams. Mm -hmm. They would call her like she would throw together these elixirs and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, she mm -hmm. if you wanted to know how to heal something, a tummy ache or this or that, right. they would call her. Right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now, there are siblings, there you know, children, her children who were not brought up together, mm -hmm. but then had children. Right, my, my life. Right. And some of those folks are now health coaches. Some of those folks are nurses. Mm -hmm. There was a call <laughs> to yeah. do that work, you know? Mm -hmm. And either you're going to listen to it or you're not going to listen to it. But I feel like more and more of us are being called to heal our, our lineage, our legacy. I love and it. we're doing that in different ways. For me, it's through the food. It's through coaching. Mm -hmm. It's through those things. For other people like yourself, it's through having your show. Yeah. And, you know, for others, it's a hairstylist because people yeah. are talking to them, sharing their feelings, mm -hmm. unpacking things with folks, right? So yeah. we're being called. And it's up to us to listen to the things that we are called to do. And for me, that's one of the reasons why I decided to 
you know, move on out of being in the classroom to do this yeah. work because the call was so strong. I was yeah. like, I have to honor this call because I know this is where I need to be. I love, I love it. I love it. And we're gonna we're gonna get together again because on my my podcast, the pre-recorded podcast, I'd like to talk to, you know, women about their journey. And so I want to talk a dig deeper into that, right? That call. Cause I think that's that's yeah. a that's a conversation that I think um will uplift a lot of people, right? So before we end, tell everybody what you're doing now. Cause I love the email. I'm like, oh, this is great, perfect timing. So she can tell everybody <laughs> what's going on. Lord have mercy. Um, yeah. So a lot of people responded to that email. I yeah. sent out an email, y'all, today, just letting people know. Because I, I literally am now trying to get myself together with this yeah. new schedule. Mm -hmm. And so I haven't sent out any emails to anybody. So I was like, before February is over, yeah. let me send an email to my people and let them know what's going on. Yeah. So um, I'm full-time health coach, full-time mm -hmm. Chef B. And I'm so excited about it. So, you know, if you or anyone that you know are interested in getting healthy plant-based foods, we have our essential meals to go. That's the number two go um, yes. service. And we offer pickup, delivery, and we ship nationwide. So no mm -hmm. matter where you are in the U.S., we can definitely get those meals to you. Yeah. We also will be at farmer's market. So now that I have more time... I got to get out into the community and, yes. and share with people these meals. So mm -hmm. our farmer's market season starts next month, the end of next okay. month. Yes. So I was just invited to one of them um, here in Atlanta. So people will be able to experience our snack boxes. We have healthy snack boxes, our prepared meals, soups, drinks. We have seasonal drinks, all of the things. Um, and then... The other big piece is we're heading to Jamaica. So we launched mm -hmm. our retreats last mm -hmm. year, um, the Palette Reset, which is a cleanse mm -hmm. experience. And for those people who just need to get out of their environment, mm -hmm. they can leave and come with me to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. We do a beautiful, beautiful tour and experience mm -hmm. with our guests just to help them to reclaim and reconnect back to themselves. Mm -hmm through exploring Jamaica, the food, the culture, the everything. And so that um, retreat will happen in May and June. So we have two yeah. days. So if folks want to connect with me, I'm on Instagram. I am Chef B with three E's and those B's stand for Be Empowered, Energized, and Engaged. So I am mm -hmm. Chef B are the platform handles for YouTube, Instagram, mm -hmm. Twitter, you name it. And then if you want to check out what we do, you can always go over to chefb.com with three E's and everything's there. The meal prep, all of the different offerings that we have. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Y'all really check her out. Definitely follow um, the YouTube channel. Uh, go check out her prepared meals. I actually sent a, a and you can do gift cards too, because I sent a gift card to my gift brother for birthday, yeah. so he could he could order. Yeah. So he could order some meals because um, she does ship, ship nice and wide. Um, so yeah, I I am just so grateful that you decided to to say yes and spend some time with me um, here on Alignment Vision Action. For those of you who join the audience, thank you so much for being here. Oh, I am Laurel you. Rutledge, the host of Alignment Vision Action, where we talk about all the things right that are getting you where you want to be, who you are, where you are, what you want, and what it takes to get there. And by doing that, you get aligned you get your vision clear and then you move into empowered action. And so I want to thank Chef B for being here with me today. Um, I really appreciate it. And and Fireside is going to be on twice a month, most likely. So, so stay tuned. If you're not following me, please follow me here on Fireside. I'll be posting the shows, um, looking at some really cool people coming up for Women's History Month. So the show will be twice a month instead of um, every week uh, this year for 2023. And uh, I'd love to hear from you. Join the audience, pass it along. I'm going to do the replays. I'll put those out. It'll probably be up tomorrow. So you can have uh, a chance to see everything that, that Chef B said. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Beautiful. Yeah. And have thank a you. great rest of your week. And we will connect.